and we are live at Lakeithia Nicole Talk. I am your girl Lakeithia Nicole, and we have special guests with us, Sasha Devale. Sasha, yes. so listen, I don't like butchering <laughs> people's names. So you no, you said it right, right, girl. I you said it right. right. Oh you said it right. Yes, yes, I'm so excited. So excited <laughs> to have you here. I was my first thing was I did not want to butcher your name, so that was extremely important for me. You said I didn't, so we're just gonna go right into it. So Sasha, um, I want to first thank you for being a part of the show. Um, I've done so much research, so we're going to really, really, really get into your story. So um, great. I'm ready. Yes, yes. So Sasha, we see, you know, on the story, the goal is to tell the story of the guests. And we see this glitz and the glam. And I remember reaching out to you and I said, oh, you're this actress, you're this model producer and you said to me which really stood out you said you know yeah that is what i am but i do have a story that's what i needed to hear so speaking of that we're gonna go back to the beginning where did this beautiful glamorous journey begin okay so i really started in this industry when i was a dancer so i'm a professional salsa dancer and at the age of 12 I started traveling all over the world. So that was when everything pretty much started for me. And I did that for about six years. I've been to Italy, Germany, London. I did tours all over the world, wow. which was amazing. It was yes. such an incredible experience. Yes. And I feel like, you know, just traveling, learning new cultures, eating different foods foods it just did a number on me so it was something that I always cherish and I carry with me and that was my start I did a music video and magazines around 16 17 years old well I, I'll say like 17 getting fresh out of high school I did a, a magazine I did double XL magazine king magazine show magazine music videos because during that time the music videos were popping like it was so, a thing gotcha so to take you back so that was the grind for you like the the music videos and magazines yes okay. so like i said uh, initially it started dancing i did that for about six years mm -hmm. but there was no instagram there was yeah. none of that stuff yeah i think there might have been like myspace or something or maybe not even when i was traveling yeah but um it wasn't as mainstream. Mm -hmm. So I left that. I did it for about six years. I, I enjoyed it. And then I went into the entertainment industry. It was something that I've always wanted to do, um, something I always wanted to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And it just came so natural for me because I was always around yeah. these kind of people in the industry. Yeah. So I did... Um, like I said, I did the magazines, I did the music video, but it was not until I did the movie yeah. with 50 Cent called Before I Self-Destruct. I was 19 years old when it came out. Mm -hmm. That was like the biggest thing for me. Yes. And um, so I did the movie with 50 Cent mm -hmm. and I played Princess and Before I Self-Destruct. And that was such a great experience. That was my first acting job. I didn't have any experience. You know, um, I was kind of bouncing off of 50s energy and, you know, he reassured me that, that everything was going to be OK and that I got this. Mm -hmm. And I met a lot of good people, a lot of good actors, and it was just amazing. So I was on set for two weeks. I shot the movie. I played the lead role called Princess and Before I Self-Destruct. And it was just amazing. Then I went on to do two seasons with Nick Cannon for Wild and Out. Okay. That was so much fun. And then I went to do uh, Uncommon Sense with Charlemagne the God from The Breakfast Club. And then during that period, um, I was just thinking of a way to transition. I also was a bartender in uh, New York. And I don't know if you heard of the girls called the Star Tenders. Yes, the Starlet. So before we go into that, we, we got to touch on this first role, you know, we, we yes, let's go. That. Yes, yes. So 
So, Sasha, I want you to tell me, you know, landing that role, was there a grind in order to do so? Because what we want the people to see is that behind the glitz, the glam, the success, that for everybody, there's an empathy stage and every great story, it comes with that. You know, it doesn't just happen overnight. So I wanted to get into the grind of that. So in order for you to get that role, was there a grind? Yes, Okay. there was a grind. And it's pretty much just being where you need to be. You know, um, I did a, another interview earlier today and I was speaking to the kids um uh, from a Chicago high school. And, and like I was telling them, it's about networking, yeah. just being in the right space at the right yeah. time. Yeah. You know, I was fortunate enough through the music videos, through magazines, that I was able to meet these people and yeah. I still connected with them. Mm -hmm. And then what they did was that anytime an event was going on, they will always let me know. Yeah. So I will go and then I meet someone else yeah. It's maybe somebody in radio, maybe yeah. a, a producer. Mm -hmm. So I was always in the space. Yeah. I was always out networking, mm -hmm. you know, and I just had a goal. Yeah. And I knew that if I couldn't get to my goal one way, mm -hmm. I'll just try another way exactly. until I get there. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely recommend everyone to just network, get out there, be around the people doing the things that you want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, be around like-minded people, Yeah. you know, because those are the people that are going to motivate you to open a business or look at things differently. And like, honestly, I never thought that I would be behind a camera and now look. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I see that you were networking, um, along the journey, meeting people, and then like the process of landing before I self-destruct, how did you get the role? Like, did you go in and audition? Was it hundreds of people? Like, how did that process go? Okay, so I did a music video for 50 Cent called I Like The Way She Do It and Ride Her Part Two. Okay. And when I did that music video, he was in the beginning stages of writing mm -hmm. this script because he wrote it, directed it, directed it and starred in it. So he was in that process, the very beginning. So he told a group of us that were in the music video, hey, you know, I'm working on another project. You know, if you ladies want to uh, audition, you know, I'm holding auditions on this date, this time, and you know, give it a shot. Uh -huh. So I'm like, wow, this is my opportunity. Yeah. So I went and there was like hundreds of people uh -huh. and I was ready. Wow. I was ready. Like I wanted that more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. And I went up there. I auditioned. I nailed it. I became that character. Like it was undeniable. Like when I walked in there, I was princess. Yes. And it's funny because that's something that he, he said right after. Oh, when you walked in, you walked in as princess. And, yeah. you know, you just have to get in that zone and you have to have the confidence. And yeah. If you know this is what you want to do, go for it. Give it your all. Yeah. And so how was it working with 50? And being that was your first role, like, how did it feel? Because, I mean, most people don't get a role beside a multi-platinum, you know, he is an entrepreneur. He is, you know, all of these great things. Like, how was that working with him for you, being your first role out of the jump? You're breaking up a little bit. Am I? Can okay, you repeat so, it again? Yes. So I said most people, their first role is not working with this triple platinum artist, entrepreneur. So how was that for you working alongside 50 Cent himself? It, you see, like, what are the odds, you know? Right? So that's the reason, like, and, and my, my life has consisted of things like that, mm -hmm. being around the right people mm -hmm. at the right time being prepared, being ready. Yeah. You know, um, when I did the, like I said, when I did the movie with fifth, I didn't have no acting experience, Wow. you know? So that being my first role, it was a lot of pressure, That's what I, yeah. but again, it was so new to me. I was like immersed in this whole world wow. on set. And it was just, I'm like, yes, I could see myself here. I, I really love this. And 
you know, it was a lot of discipline because yeah. you have to read lines and, yeah. you know, you have to focus. It's not about, you know, hey, I got this and let me just half-ass it, you yeah. know. Um, it was a lot, a lot of lines that I had to memorize. And like I said, it was my first time, but yeah. being around great people and being around people that have the experience, you could kind of bounce off of each other. And that's yeah. pretty much what we did. Gotcha. So did 50 give you any advice being it was your first role, like any pointers for you to really, really nail it? Yeah, just to um, just to relax mm -hmm. um, and focus mm -hmm. and just give it my all and have fun with it. Yeah, incredible. And so after before I self-destruct, what was the next thing in this journey to lead to catapult you to the success that you are at at this point? What was your next, you know, situation? So my next situation was meeting Nick Cannon. Oh, okay. So I went for an audition. Uh -huh. uh, Nick Cannon was having auditions in New York. Mm -hmm. And I'm based out of New Jersey. Okay. So New York is only like 10 minutes away from me. Yeah. And um, he had an audition and I was like, sure. This yeah. was at the very beginning. I was like really hungry. I was taking every opportunity that came my way. Obviously, if I was cool with it but I was just taking opportunities after opportunities and I was just like yeah I wasn't afraid you know yeah. so I auditioned mm -hmm. for Nick Cannon for Wild and Out and he was like man you're amazing I would love to have you part of this and I was like sure so I went on to do two seasons then we traveled because we did a tour so he selected a few girls from Wild and Out and we went to Hawaii, we went to the Bahamas, we did a whole tour and it, that was amazing. And it was like a wild and out tour yeah. and it was just great. So one thing led on to another and then that's when I uh, did Uncommon Sense with Charlemagne. And I did, um, there was another show I did with Charlemagne it was like a skit. It was called Stoner's Bowl, but it was okay. also for MTV. So I'm just, you know, fortunate enough to be around the, the heavy hitters and the power players. Yeah. I was watching um, last night in interviews, researching, because I that's a part of my process. I saw where you were talking about, you were talking about the star tending and you were bartending. Um, I'm not sure who the interview was with, but you were saying how you know, um, you did that after the film, you know, yes. can we get into that? Because that's part of this journey, you know, yeah. of yours. It How is. That go? Yeah. So it, it, it was crazy because that kind of just happened. Mm -hmm. Like that was just in line to just happen next. Mm -hmm. There was a moment where I already did the movie and I thought, hey, well, this is going to pick up for me. I'm going to do another movie. Mm -hmm. But the management that I had, um, you know, I don't like to blame anyone, but I didn't feel like I had the proper management that could have kept it going. Yes, yes, I understand. So uh, when they brought the opportunity to me about bartending and making a lot of money I was like hmm this is good yeah I you know I'll do it I'll give it a yeah. shot yeah. and then during that period we created something um my management at the time and I along with the girls we created star tenders mm -hmm. and that went crazy you guys like that star tenders? yes oh, yes wow. so we created I the star tenders that. movement so yeah, I'm an original what? star tender. Yeah. Wow, incredible. I never know. Yeah. I've heard about the starlets or are they are they the starlets? Starlets is the name of the club. And then okay. we created a crew of girls that also were in music videos and magazines. And we kind of segue it to the bartending life. Yeah. And it was just amazing for us. Like yeah. I did not think I would go that way, but the money that we made. Yeah. And the impact that we made in the bartending world, like yeah. we literally changed the game when it came wow. to, you know, bartenders yeah. and, and how they make their money. And yeah, Absolutely. so we, we pretty much started that. Yeah. Wow. 
Now, Sasha, was that like in between the, the film of Before I Stopped the Struck? Was that like five years later, or how long after did you guys did you get into the the star tending? I would say so. I was like nineteen when I did the movie. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe four or five years later. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, like and four or that, five years later. And you had so I, I went. I did the movie. Yes. Then I did two seasons of Wild and Now. Gotcha. And then I did the bartending. Gotcha. And then when I stopped doing the bartending. I was the first one to go because okay. I'm like, okay, this is cool, yeah. but I have a goal yeah, yeah, and I'm only here to make you. money right now. And yeah. just to continue to stay relevant and mm -hmm. stay in the culture and in the industry. And I so I always had a plan. So did you feel somewhere like, because sometimes people think it's just about money, but it's deeper than money. It's about purpose. And I feel like for you to walk away from all that money and say, you know, I got to get on path with my career. I feel like, you know what I mean? Because we can't really make careers out of that won't be lasting, right? The starlets? Yeah. The star tending? Mm -hmm. So you decided that you wanted to, you know, really, really, really concentrate on what your passion. Is that what happened? That's right. So. Okay. A little bit of my passion because I've always liked to just be in front of the camera and mm -hmm. acting. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? This is cool. I'm making good money, but I want to do something more meaningful. Yeah. Um, I want to give back. Like, I want to help. Yeah. I want to just, I was just a little bit different, you know? Yeah. And I knew once I got in there, I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay here for a little bit. I'm going to mm -hmm. stack my money up. I'm going to get yeah. this money and make my exit and there's nothing wrong with that i mean right. a lot of girls still bartend more power to them is a lot of money in that yeah. and you could branch off and do mm -hmm. other things with the money yeah and that's what i did yeah so when i left i created my company called overtime productions which is a production company mm -hmm. and during that time i opened it and again i was making the transition of leaving the bartending world mm -hmm. and getting more into the space of what my new life would be. Yeah. And, you know, I had to empower myself okay. because when you have the power and you control it, no one can take that away from you. Exactly. Yeah. So what I did was I learned the ins and outs of the production side. So where someone could say, hey, um, I have a production company. I do this. I do that. They have to hire production people to do it. Mm -hmm. They can't do it themselves. Yeah. So what I did was I learned how to shoot. I learned how to edit. Wow. And now I have the power. So right, right now I could do a show on anyone right now. Yeah. Love that. You know, and yeah. that's that's important. So whatever industry you in, whatever business you in learn it because right. if not you're going to always need someone you're always going to be paying for the services and you're not really going to get the bulk of everything right because you you just have so many people doing it for you yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that at right. all right. but if you can learn your the ins and outs of your business do it because then you don't have to depend on anyone. Then you could, you know, you could just move and do what you want to do, how you want to do it. Exactly. And um, I want to touch on that because, you know, in the beginning, like I said, you talked about, I, I remember reaching out saying, you know, you, you do your actress, your model, you know, and also, you know, you've done all of these different shows. So let's talk about the fact that you are you know, you are the owner of your own company. You do have your own business now. You transition even from the starless to now being your own boss, pretty much, right? Yes. So let's get into that. Um, it's a great experience. It's still a new experience and a new space for me. Mm -hmm. And it's like learn as you grow, yeah. right? So yeah. the best thing that you could do is just put yourself in the game. Sometimes people don't put themselves in the game because they're, so, they're thinking about everything so much. And if they don't have everything, if they don't have everything together, they won't start. Yeah. Right. 
we live in a new day and age where you could do it all. Right. You know, you could, if you don't know something, you go on Google, you figure it out. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn how to cook, you go on YouTube and you learn how to cook. Like we're living in that space now. And a lot of people are creating online businesses. A lot of people are waking up and saying, hey, I need to create something. I need to own something. Yes. And th the best advice I could give is just, even if you're new to this space, do as much research as you can and just take the leap. And, just and go for it and learn as you grow. Exactly. You said something too just now. So can you tell them how important it is to just start without you know all of this? Because a lot of times we limit ourselves because we put li limitations saying, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that. I'm sure you didn't have everything you needed um, to start this company, Overtime Productions, but tell yeah. them how important it is to just start and get moving in that purpose. So it's super important to just start. You know, even if it's something with the name, start with the name. What do you want to call your business? Yeah. What means something to you? Play around with it, use your name. Right. use some uh I don't know just get creative with it you yes. know but just start yes because start. if yes. you don't put yourself in a game what are you doing what are you doing exactly and, and it's okay because I, I, I'm gonna just say one thing yes. a lot of people are afraid to start because they don't want to look like they're starting from scratch or they're starting from the bottom that's it's the wrong okay. mentality to yes. have right right talk about it wrong mentality and you know exactly. it's okay because as you grow older you start to understand things right mm -hmm. when I was younger I didn't know this stuff as I got older I'm like okay I'm watching everything scoping everything out I'm seeing how everything works mm -hmm. and I'm like okay I could do this yes and then I just started doing my research and started learning and it's hard it's going to take a lot of discipline yeah. but if you give it your all it's so rewarding yes. so rewarding so rewarding and exactly so i want to go back and then we're going to go you know back to the overtime productions but this is part of the i'm not sure where in the story i saw saw you actually saying you know you had some time in los angeles um, and you know, you being based out on the East coast, can we talk mm -hmm. about that Los Angeles experience? Cause that's where I live. I'm actually out here in New York. I've been here for the last year, but LA is home for me. It's been, you know, for the last 20 years. So can you explain how was your experience in Los Angeles? And because as a woman, what they don't realize is that we, what you did, I commend you by becoming your own boss, because that way you take the limitations off of yourself. Can you talk mm -hmm. about how that experience in Los Angeles was and, you know, just finding yourself in the midst of that? That's an amazing question. And, and the reason, okay, so I'm going to give you, it's, it's two parts to that. Okay. okay. So when I was in LA, I was thinking of making the move because of my acting. And I'm like, that's just the place to be. Yeah. So I gave it a try. And during that time, like I met a lot of people, but it, they, they were more into me than business. That's LA. So that kind of gave me like a little bad taste of LA. And f like, after that, I kind of gave LA a break. Like, I'm like, okay, I don't like it. I don't know too many people out here. A lot of people swear they're somebody and it's that could do this and could do that. And, you know, if you're not from out there, you can, they could swindle you, they could get you. And especially yeah. they know how to pull your heartstrings. You know, this is something I'm passionate about. This is something yeah. I love. Yeah. So, you know, I had a few little run-ins with like producers and directors and say, oh, you know, we love your look. We would love to work with you. And then it stays right there. It stays right there. Exactly. So, you know, I had a little bad taste in my mouth mm -hmm. about LA, mm -hmm. but the good thing that came out of LA was that I used to go a lot to Vegas. Okay. 
And during one of my trips to driving to Vegas and coming back to LA, mm-hmm. it's a nice little drive, you know, that four hour drive, straight desert. Yeah. I'm listening to music and I love hip hop. I love rap music. Nice. <laughs> and I'm driving and listening to Nipsey Hustle. Mm. And he had like this mixtape called uh, Mailbox Money. And in that mixtape, there was a song called Overtime. And I'm listening to it and I'm like, wow. So I'm driving. I have all this time zoning out, listening to music. And I'm like, wow. I, that's when I was like, overtime. I need to call my production company overtime because I'm going to work overtime to wow. deliver and get, yeah. get it done, get the job done. So I'm going to go above and beyond. I'm going to work wow. overtime. So I'm thankful for that, you know, like ideas and these things come out of nowhere, you know? So I'm just thankful for every step that, you know, that I've taken and good, bad, because you know what, as long as I keep moving forward and I take the good, get rid of the bad, I'm going to always be straight. I'm going to be good. Exactly. Now that name is powerful. So on that journey, on that ride to Las Vegas, you created the name Overtime Productions. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I absolutely love the name. I love that you you get, when you hear the name, this is someone that is serious, that is hardworking, that is driven. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they're going to put in that work, that overtime work. So now, is that the end of the Los Angeles experience? Just, you know, those few things in there? Well, yes, for that period of time when I was out there. Yeah. Now I have a great taste for it. Okay. I'm good. I love LA. Uh-huh. I've been working out there a lot, but okay. it's different now that I have power yes. and that I have the control exactly. and that I'm not asking, hey, do you have an, do you have a role for me? Can I audition? No, I, I'm creating my own stuff. I have shows that I have. I have a rap show called Respect the Flow that you guys could check out on the Forest Bias Network. And I just released the first episode today with an artist called Kay Smith, which is Will Smith's nephew. Mm -hmm. He's a rapper. And you know, I love to showcase new talent, up and coming artists. I just, I'm I'm all in, like I love helping people, you know? So during the whole experience with LA, that was cool. I didn't let it affect me. Yeah. I came back this time and I went to LA and I got to work right away. Wow. Incredible. So I've been working. I've been shooting a lot. You know, I shot a cooking show out there with Charles Oakley that's getting ready to come out. Well, it'll be out during the summertime. Okay. And we shot a few episodes in LA. We mm-hmm. were able to shoot a few episodes in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So I just been working working and like I said the minute I put myself in power I'm good I don't have to ask anyone and and if I want to create a show I could create a show if I want to give you a show I could give you a show you know and we're gonna do it for the people a lot of people especially tv I I I do digital stuff Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of red tape when it comes to things getting done on tv yeah you know, um, they might not like a name and they might not like the cast that you have and they might want to swap it out. Yeah. And that's your baby. If that's something you created, you don't want nobody tampering with that. Exactly. You know, so in the digital side, we could curse, we could do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. And the shows that we're producing, we give you like we come for you. Like if you're dope, you have something hot going on, you're buzzing, we're going to tailor it around you. I don't know if you saw this clip uh, with Boosie Badass. It went viral okay. last year. Okay. Um, so we have Boosie Badass. We have Lamar and Sabrina. Uh, okay. We just released a reality show for them so that did well. I, see, um, I actually did an event with Lamar and um, what's her name? Sabrina. Sabrina, yes, back in Los Angeles in 2019. I want you to talk mm-hmm. about the shows because that's one of the shows I've seen that you are a part of. Can we bring the people up to date now with the journey as far as the different shows that you have 
you know, produced and, you know, brought to your, under your production company? Yes. So, um, I have like, I have a partnership with, uh, the forest bias network and I'm an executive producer for them. So any ideas, anybody, if you have any show ideas, you could definitely reach out to me. And, um, so yeah, so like I said, I have partners and the first project that we worked on together was Lamar and Sabrina. So then after that came the Boosie Badass. Okay. And we also have a cooking show in the can, which is going to be great for all the sports enthusiasts. Like, like if you're a fan of sports, you're going to love this. We have Scotty Pippen. Um, wow. And it's dope because we have Charles Oakley cooking for them. And we have like a little sit down interview with them. We have Lisa Ray. Um, we just have so many people on it. Okay. So it's going to be really, really good. Wow. So. Let me make sure I, I heard that right. Your first show was with Sabrina and Lamar? Yeah, the first show that I produced with my partners and, was Lamar and Sabrina, yes. And that's under Overtime Productions? Oh, that's a, a partnership. So okay. I, I partnered with Phoenix Digital. That's okay. another production company, but okay. it's through the Forest Bias Network. That's where you could find all the um, shows okay. on that platform. Gotcha. So what exactly was your first show that you guys did under Overtime Productions? It's that one. Well, that is huge. That's yeah. what I was trying to see. Like, yeah. So that's and I, I shot picture. the, like, you know, uh, my partner and I, okay. I had my camera, he had his camera, and we just shot the whole show, just him and I. Wow, that's incredible. Being under your umbrella, your first show is a yeah. show with, you know, Lamar to me is an, an A-list. I don't care what anyone says. You know, he was with everything he's doing. So for mm -hmm. you, that's like huge success. So that was the first show. And then your second show was the show that you let the the I saw the 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 clip on Instagram today. Uh that's my personal show. Oh, okay. So let's get so, into your yes. personal show too. That that's a show that I'm the host of. Okay. The first the first project was Lamar and Sabrina. Gotcha. I'm actually shooting. So I'm one of the producers on that wow. show. How was that? And experience? then it, it was great. I mean, it did so well. Wow. I mean, the experience was amazing. I learned so much. I mean, I, I've been learning the ins and outs. I like I know how to hold the boom. I can wow. mic people. Like I learned everything in the production side. You know, um, so it was just great. I'm just trying to get better. I'm, you know, uh, Wendy Williams picked it up. She talked about it. It was on the um, Hot Topics. Oh, incredible. So I'm excited about that. And then we have Boosie Badass that we, uh, you know, due to COVID, we had to stop production on that. Yeah. But we'll resume shortly. Yeah. And um, that went crazy. That had the internet in a frenzy. The whole Boosie wow. Badass. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. And then now up to speed is the current show that you're working on, right? With the Correct. That I just dropped today. It's called Respect the Flow. Okay. And it's pretty much I go into it's like a sort of like a day in a life. Okay. So I follow the artists. I go to their hood, see where they're from. I'll I'll follow them to the studio. So if they're laying a track down, if they're, you know going through beats with their producers or you know engineers like I kind of get all of that wow incredible do you have all your rappers for the show already well I've shot a few episodes already but okay. I'm still looking I You're mean looking. I'm always looking to shoot more talent mm -hmm. so yeah but I've, I've shot a few episodes my first episode is out now it's called respect the flow and it's on the forest bias network Okay. And uh, you could also catch the Lamar and Serena show on there as well. Awesome. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So now, and then what about the interview you did with the K Smith? That's what show is that? That's the respect the flow. Oh, so he's one of them too. Gotcha. Yes. Now so we, okay. we, we, we started it off with him. Okay. And um, he's the first one up. He has an album dropping today. So oh, we wow. made sure that we dropped it with his album and dope, yeah, dope, dope. 
got you. Okay, got you. I'm gonna have some dope female rappers on there as well. Uh-huh. I'm actually shooting tomorrow. I have a, a girl from New York. Okay. I don't want to say the name, okay. but she's really dope. And I can't wait to bring her on Respect the Flow for you guys to see her. She's That's awesome. Incredible, incredible. And so is there anything, I feel like you're a woman of many hats at this point. So is there anything that you're not doing at this moment? So what is, right now, I know you're currently still working on this show. Are you doing anything else right now? Like- yeah, I'm glad you said that. So here we go. So I also partnered up with McBride Stories and they're a children's publishing company and they do children's books. So the first book that I did, it's an Amazon number one bestseller. This is the first book. This is Mason. He's a rapper turned activist. Mm -hmm. I had TMZ pick it up. They love the book. This comes in English and in Spanish. Incredible. And I'm working, I'm working on something right now for my Latinos. Okay. Something really dope. So I have a lot of stuff that I'm working on. And like I said, this is the first book through my partnership with McBride Stories. Mm -hmm. And you guys need to check it out. We break down the uh, Bill of Rights, the Ten Commandments. And it's just dope. It's it's dope. And it's important because, you know, a lot of kids, Black and Brown kids, you know, we don't have books for us. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you look at the numbers, I believe it's like 11.6 mm-hmm. where they represent African Americans. Yeah. And then for Latinos is like 5.3. Wow. And then it's like 40, like 42% for white people mm-hmm. or Americans, mm-hmm. you know? So there's, a big gap there and Mm -hmm. I want to change that I feel like it starts with the kids Mm -hmm. and I feel like we need to see more people like us yeah being represented we have stories too you know exactly yes exactly so this was very important for me when I partnered up with them it was extremely important for me because I feel like it's the kids the kids are the future and if we could give them good stuff to read and they could see people like us this this is perfect yes absolutely now can and a lot of people them? don't know about those numbers no they people don't. need to know about those numbers and i'm gonna yes. make sure that i let everyone know about those numbers because we need to change that and can you tell them again where they can get this book the audience sure so you could get it on amazon okay so you could get it on Amazon.com and okay. get it shipped to you right away. Incredible. They have it in English and in Spanish. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I wanted to also talk to you because, you know, you seem like you're doing a lot. And there's no guess that with the current state of the world, with the pandemic, I wanted to know, has it shifted you in any way, the way that you navigate and get things done? To me, it seems like you're you're staying busy. You know, but can you tell me how this has affected you, your business, uh, the pandemic and everything? Um, it, it really hasn't affected okay. it. In fact, like when it comes to the production side, things are pretty much booming because it's a content business. Okay. So a lot of people are home and a lot of people need to watch something. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are binge watching things on Netflix, Hulu, yeah. Yeah. and then here we go and we're doing stuff online and dominating the digital side. Yeah. So there's always, you know, content, content is needed. Content is king, you know? So I was able to still work, of course, using the, um, the COVID guidelines and making sure everyone is safe. But I was still able to work. And like I said, it's a content business. So everyone's on their phones. Everyone is, okay, I, I just binge watched this. What's next? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's been pretty well, actually. Incredible. That's good. Mm-hmm. It sounds like everything is moving. I know back in LA with production, a lot of the shows have been 
you know, delayed. They're not able mm-hmm. to get moving. So it's beautiful that you were able to navigate, you know, on the East Coast and just keep business um, running. Now, is there anything, Sasha, that you would like your audience to know before we close out? Is there any um, other thing that you want them to know that you're working on? Um, right now, I'm just pretty much pushing everything that I have on my plate. Mm-hmm. I have Respect the Flow, which yes. is, is an original hip hop series mm-hmm. where I come to your hood and I get to know you, the artist. I get to know where you're from. I get to follow you and go with you to the studio. I get mm-hmm. to dive into your world and show the world that. So that's uh, the first show that I have that just dropped today. Okay. And stay tuned. I have a lot of artists, a lot of female artists coming up male artists, dope artists, and people that you should definitely keep an eye for. And I have a cooking show with Charles Oakley coming out during the, in the summertime. Okay. And that's going to be amazing. And just stay tuned. I'm always uh, shooting, always looking for talent, always looking for new ideas. And yeah, you, you guys can follow me on Instagram. It's at Sasha Del Valle. And if you want to reach out for any show ideas, you could email me as well. I also have that. It's in my, it's on my page. It's in my bio. So. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and one last question with you doing so many things, um, the next five years, what are your, some goals that you have that you, some things that you want to accomplish that you haven't? Well, I mean, I would like to get acquired. So I would like to build my business, my production company to the point where I get bought out, Mm -hmm. you know, and I could just relax, have a family and just sail off in the sunset. That's it. That's my goal. I'm focused. Like, I just want to do everything that I want to do and that I've always wanted to do. I'm not worried about what anyone has to say. I'm just doing me right now. And I'm going to continue to stay on the train. and. I'm getting back into the acting. So who knows? You might see me on a big screen again. And that sounds incredible, Sasha. Uh, I just, even as you were talking and I seen what you were just saying too, that you're giving, you know, opportunities to people. Um, I have an empowerment company of women, you know, mm-hmm. working together. And I wanted to know, it seems like you're about giving opportunities to women. How was it important to you you know, working with alongside women and and giving opportunities to women? Well, it's important for me because I feel like I've been in the, in the, in the industry and in the game for a long time. So, you know, when I see a lot of women like me, you know, in this space, I'm like, okay, I know better. I'm older. I've been in this space a little bit longer than you guys. So I could drop some gems and I could put you on game and I could tell you how to navigate it. And I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that because that's what I wish a lot of other women would have done for me. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just need guidance right. and you know, if I could be the one to provide that. And even if it's just a little bit like, Hey, you know what, you should look into opening a business or don't do it that way because in the long run, it's not going to benefit you. Maybe do it this way or secure yourself by doing this. I'm going to be that person. That's incredible. I love that. I love that. And and I love what you're doing too. Thank you so much for reaching out. This was such a great interview. I love how you did your research and you asked some really, really, really great questions. Oh my God. Thank you so much i really appreciate it and i want to thank you for doing the show you know i I comment under your pictures i say beautiful inside out because i could tell instantly that you had a a beautiful spirit so i really feel like thank you yeah not just the physical beauty but the uh inward beauty i feel like the sky is the limit it's not even the limit for you i think that you know great things are in store and i just want to wish you the best of blessings with everything that you're doing and again thank you so much for thank you for you as well thank you so much i really appreciate it that's right i just want all our all all of us to win yeah it's a a women movement right now exactly exactly and even taking that control like you said you did that's 
what you know, the young girls coming up need to know. You know what I mean? And in this mm -hmm. interview, I'm sure it's going to inspire a lot of people to realize that it's important to take control. Don't allow people to limit you. And that's what you did. You didn't allow them to limit you in Los Angeles and put this. It's really hard because I know how it is in LA. I, I've been through it. But I like the fact that you broke out of it and you took control and you created Overtime Productions. And it just gave you a beautiful story. And I thank you again for just telling that beautiful story. And so now we see, you know what I mean? Behind the glitz and the glam, what you did, you know, overcome. And it's led you to this. And it's like I said, it's only going to get greater and greater. That's right. It gets greater later. And, and one thing that I want to let the people know is sometimes you're not going to have anybody there as a cheerleader cheering you on sometimes you have to run off your own energy and you know uh getting into this production side there was a lot of times where I'm like I don't know this you know I'm I'm learning this and you know you want to give up sometimes you're like yo you know what this isn't happening fast enough but yeah you know it's just you just got to stick in there and and just keep going like I said sometimes you're going to have to run off your own energy. Yes. Sometimes you're not going to have people supporting you. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you're going to do something and you think a lot of people are going to cheer for you and they don't. Exactly. They, You know, like they don't yes. support. So don't support. it's a lot of that stuff yes. when you try to become a business person or when you're trying to take your whatever it is that you're doing to the next level, you're going to go through a lot of those things so yeah, you just yeah. got to stay focused mm -hmm. you can't worry about what everybody else thinks mm -hmm. or if they like it or not exactly how do you feel about it mm -hmm. and like i said be strong mm -hmm. and and buckle down mm -hmm. buckle down and stay focused yes yes thank you so much thank you so much for those words i'm telling you i know that this is gonna really really empower the women the young girls and people that are in this position where what we talked about in the beginning they don't know to start they, they, they think they don't have enough and and you even said something too where um you hit on it as far as being self-motivated you know what i mean people are not mm -hmm. going to clap for you you know and then you said something good because this is what it's also about too on this show is to really really inspire and motivate people to really get mm -hmm. moving you know again as, as i said you see these people and you see them, you see their winning side and you see the success, but you don't know what they've gone through. You know what I mean? To get there. And that's right. Of people don't know that you probably went through that phase in Los Angeles where it was difficult and, and they tried to limit you, but you broke through that. And so I know there's girls that have left the East Coast now and they're in that place. And so that's what they need. You know what I mean? That, mm -hmm. that encouragement that they can do it. You also said, um, I, I, my goodness, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know why that thought, but you, you touched on it. I'm not, you know, I'm going to leave it alone. You have to put yourself in a game. Like, yes, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. You have to put yourself in it. Exactly. And that's what you did. And you're a testimony to that. Yes, yes. I am actually, <laughs> because you know what? I love what Jay Z he has he has this um, quote that he says, um, the genius thing I did was that I never gave up. Yes. And that is the truth because the minute you give up, you don't know like that, that the next step could have been that step that you were looking for and exactly. you climbed all these steps and now you took yourself out the game. Yes. yes. You don't want to do that. You want to stay, stick in there, have a plan, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, like I said, there's going to be times where you don't have a cheerleader yes. cheering you on. That's yeah. when you got to run, run off your own energy, you know, and if things don't work, figure out another way to do it. Sometimes you think it's going to work this way and you figure out a different way, a different method and mm -hmm. then it works. Then it so works. just keep going, keep trying till you figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so mm -hmm. good, Sasha. You, you actually went back into it when you said that, when you gave that Jay-Z quote, that was actually what I was trying to say when you were saying don't quit so that's the thing a lot of people they think once they get in it boom it's gonna happen and they don't realize nothing happens overnight <laughs> especially girls. that's right I mean a lot of things take years yeah you know everything has been like every transition in my life it didn't happen 
right away. Mm. It took time. Yes. yes. So a lot of yes. people think, and, and that's what, um, not to go back to it, but yeah. um, when I was doing the bartending, I knew that it was going to take time for mm. me to transition into something else. Yeah. Because working in the nightlife, it could throw everything off for you, mm-hmm. you know, where you go to get a job yeah, and it's not the same pay yeah. as what you make in an hour or a day. Right. Those things can affect you. That's mm-hmm. the reason why some women stay longer bartending because mm-hmm. they can't leave the money. Wow. So. Wow. And, you that- know, I think same, yeah. it, it takes time, but if you have a plan and you just keep at it, you'll get there. You'll get there. So the goal is to not stop, you know, not stop. right? And, and, and don't compare your where you at in life to others. Right. Right. Because yes, your journey is your journey. Right. You it might take you a different route. It might mm-hmm. take you longer. Mm-hmm. But there are certain things that you need to learn in that time frame that is taking you longer. Right. That is for you. You right. might have a different path that's going to require something else. Right. Exactly. So don't compare yourself to other people and don't be hard on yourself because a lot of times you want things to happen right away. And then you see someone and you're like, oh my God, it seems like this is working for them <laughs> or they're making so much money that they're able to do other things. I know that could be stressful. I know yeah. it could, it can be, but as long as you worry about you and what you have in front of you and what you're doing, you'll be fine. I, I think comparison is the enemy, right? A lot of times that's what people do. They spend a lot of time comparing mm-hmm. and competing when mm-hmm. I feel it's important for us to focus on ourselves. Like you said, what's for them is for them. Your journey is so different. And I think when more people begin to accept their own personal journey, the mm-hmm. beauty in that alone, they don't realize that the 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 um you know the the fault what do you call, how do you get that the letdown the the I can't I don't know what's happening right now in my mind but basically not getting there at the time that you think that you should get there that's all a part of your journey and that it's all working yeah. for you just like you I'm sure in the process and you going through these different things you know you could have thought about oh what about such and such and such and such but mm-hmm. you can tell that you stay focused on your own path. You know what I mean? And that's so that's important. right. A lot of the kids, they don't know that nowadays. They look at the big stars and this person and that person. And like you said, how they made it and how it happened for them. When we're all on a different journey, we're all on a different path, but we have to embrace our own journey. And I feel like that's what you've done. You know, you've embraced your journey and you accept it for what it is mm-hmm. and what it's become for you. Right. That's right. And I'm taking it day by day. You know, that's also important. Like take things day by day. Mm -hmm. You know, things can be so stressful with trying to meet a deadline that you create for yourself. Sometimes you put pressure on yourself by Mm -hmm. trying to have it all figured out. By if I don't have it figured out by this time, it's the end of the world. You 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 have to get yourself out of thinking that way too. That's not a good way to think. That's so true. Right. We can't say it has to happen by this time you know god is mm-hmm. in control of that we just have to keep pushing keep going until we obtain it right that's right gotcha gotcha thank amen. you amen <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. thank you i'm excited i can't wait to see the interview oh i'm excited too i definitely am excited and i can't wait to check out your other stuff can you tell them again where we can find the new show on what platform is that again Yes. So my new show called Respect the Flow, you can find it on forusbyus.com. Gotcha. And then the show with Sabrina and Lamar is on. It's also on there as well. And then make sure I have another book coming out for Black History Month that would it's going to be coming out this month. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of dope, cool projects and collaborations for books coming up. So make sure you check it out. It's on Amazon. It's in English and in Spanish. Gotcha. And then you can be found on social media on, um, yeah. Under what? At Sasha Del Valle. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So I'm sure they're going to be chasing everything that you're doing down again. Thank you so much, (laughs) Sasha. 
And I thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. Everything that you're doing. I'll probably check back in with you in six months to see how everything is going. Absolutely. I would love that. Yes. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you so much. Take care. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.